Greetings, fellow football managers, and welcome to the Mestalla. Yes, we are at Valencia. This is a video that a lot of you have requested in recent times. You've been asking me about my thought process in the comments about how I get started with an unfamiliar team, how I get started with tactic building and stuff like that. Valencia was suggested by one of you. And I absolutely jumped on it because I actually used to kind of like Valencia in the early 2000s. They were doing obviously quite well, but I had a neighbor from that region of Spain. So obviously when you start a game, you are probably going to be familiar with this screen here. You've got lots of initial inbox items. I generally ignore all of these. The one I might actually click on day one is probably squad selection rules and kind of look at where the squad building side of this needs to be. Since we're in the top division of a top five league, there's going to be nothing crazy here. Nothing's going to shock us. But I would actually avoid looking at this one. I know this is one of the most important, most informational screens that you're going to see as soon as you get into the game. And this one gives you so much to look at, so much to do. It gives you an idea of a few players and such. But I would actually advise just leaving the screen be for a little bit, especially if you don't know too much about the team. If you're coming in and you know this team, kind of, you know the players, you follow the club then you might want to deal with this right away. But if you don't know the club, you're coming in fresh, there's no point looking at this. Let's look at something a little bit more useful. Obviously, the game wants you to create a tactic, and then they're going to tell you about the vision and so on. What I'm interested is what the objective is. Now, right away, the board is telling me they want to record a La Liga top half finish by the end of the current season. So that's my objective in terms of results. The media prediction for this team was ninth, although they finished 16th last season. In real life, Valencia are currently, at the time of speaking, they are ninth in the table as well. Obviously, that's not going to be super important, but it is going to dictate in my mind a little bit about what kind of style I want to play. I don't want to play Park the Bus Catenaccio stuff if I want to finish ninth. That would be more if I'm actually trying to avoid relegation. With that in mind, we're going to go to the squad. Let's forget about everything else. Let's go to this screen here. Now, there are obviously a couple of considerations. The mode you play on is going to have a lot of impact on this. There are two main modes, I think, that a lot of people play on. One is original. This game here is original mode. So all of the transfers that were due to happen in the window have been done. Just to simplify things a little bit. I do not normally play this mode. I normally play real world mode where the transfers will happen when they happen in real life. So you would have a couple in August and so on. The other thing to think about is first window transfer budgets. Do you enable them? Do you disable them? Normally, I disable them and I've done that here as well. So this one is original mode, disable transfer budgets. Because I want to create a tactic and I want to play with the players I have at my disposal, I don't want to be doing transfer wheeling and dealing right away. So this is the squad, and if you're not already on reports, you probably want to go from, I think you start on general or something like that. Just go to reports. This will give you the most action that you need. There are two views or two filters I like to look at. Number one is this one. I want to see who my best players are straight off the bat. So I'm going to scroll all the way up. I can see Jose Gaia is my best player hands down. He is the only four-star player at this club. There are a few potential players. If I click potential, there's a couple of guys who could be really, really good. Jesus Vasquez, who is a left back. And I think Gaia was also a left back. So that immediately tells me I want to utilize my left back position quite well, probably with a wing back attack or something like that. Because if we go back to ability and have a quick look at Gaia, who is our star player, he is a football manager legend, has been for eight, ten years, I think. Everybody who's played football manager in that time frame knows about this guy and it's quite amazing that he stayed at Valencia. I don't know very much about him aside from the fact that he's a very, very fine left back. He's got a lot of stats at the 14 kind of level. 13 is almost low end for him. He's only got penalty taking at 13. Marking is 12 as well, but he's got 14s in tackling, in first touch, in crossing, dribbling, actually 15 in first touch. Technique is 15 as well. Fantastic. On the middle, you can see that his mentals are amazing. He's kind of at a 14, 15, 16 level in just about everything. And his physicals are fine as well. His pace and acceleration are standout stats. So obviously, we want to try and build a team around him. We've got a wingback attack immediately, given that he's our best player. So that's something I would definitely advise, is to look at and try and find out who your star player is or star players are. With Liverpool, I think I did something like this. And we looked at players like Mo Salah, and saying, okay, we need to build a team around those guys. Same thing with Valencia. I want to build a team around Gaia at the moment. I know he is wanted, and maybe I can't hang on to him for too long. Obviously, it's the Saudi team, so I don't think he'll go right away. 
but we've got this guy for at least one year, maybe even two or three seasons if you play this save out a little bit longer. The next guys we can look at, we can actually look at all of these three and a half star players because they're going to fill out the team. Right away, I can see I've got two center backs on that list. We've got Diakabi, who, wow, he looks great. This guy looks very, very interesting. He's got pace and acceleration at 13. So those are his lowest physicals, which I like to see from a center back. Strength and jumping is strong. Aggression, bravery, quite strong. Heading is strong. Positioning is pretty strong as well. So he is fast, I would say, for the level. The 13 pace, 13 acceleration, for me, it kind of hits that benchmark level that I've talked about in different videos, like this one up here with attributes. But he's outstanding in things like strength, jumping, heading. So this guy is airily very good. But also, I will point out, passing 13, vision 12. So he can actually play the ball out from the back. Let's look at the other guy, Gabriel Paulista. This guy's even better in terms of aggression and stuff like that. He looks very much like an aggressive stopper. He has also pace 13, acceleration 14. Jumping 15 is a little bit lower, but I think he makes up for it with his aggression and bravery, which as you can see are his outstanding stats. He's more of a normal center back, but just a solid one that I think we can trust. Let him be aggressive and win the ball, win headers in the box, things like that. I like it. Okay, our goalkeeper is also in the top handful of players, which is really nice to see. When I look at his stats, I'm actually not that impressed. Yeah, his command of area, communication, those are good. Reflexes is fantastic. Jumping reach is very, very good as well. So that immediately tells me this guy should be able to dominate his six-yard box at the very least because he has really good aerial reach with his jumping. But the one thing that worries me a little bit is his agility. Positioning 13 is kind of more of an average level for this uh, standard, I would say. But he has enough that sets him out to be a good goalkeeper. The last guy we want to build our team around, I think, is Javi Guerra. Look at this guy. Fantastic. I will admit that he has popped up to me on scout reports when I did a Liverpool save. So I was looking at this guy as maybe one of my top five targets as a new young midfielder. I went for Archie Gray over him. But this guy looks very interesting. That dribbling stat is really high. He's got long shots. He can actually finish. 12 for finishing with 15 technique is pretty useful. So he can score some goals from midfield, I would say. Definitely with the long shots, 14 as well. Tackling 9 is a tiny little bit low. But passing 14, vision 14, work rate 15. So interesting. Jumping 13 as well. That is very, very interesting because that tells me that he can be a threat in the box. As we can see, he runs with the ball through center, tries killer balls and arrives late in opponent's area. So this immediately is kind of like a Frank Lampard profile. And that's probably how I want to use him. His best position is probably going to be playmaker. Yep. Advanced playmaker support. I'm not sure if I'm going to do that, but I might because arrives late. So he can still get in the box. Although I might play him as a central midfielder attack to try and actually get him into the box, force him to get in there and use that finishing of 12. Why am I getting excited about finishing 12? Because it's not that common. On an all-round midfield package like this, a lot of the time midfielders have lower finishing. When I see a midfielder with finishing 12, 13, 14, I get kind of excited. Unreasonably so, I would say. Okay, that's a look at the key members of the squad. Obviously, we've got lots of three-star players, so it's good to have a look at these players and kind of have an idea of what they want to do. This looks to be um, a fairly key player. Looks like a nice playmaker. Not very good in the air, but he's got some good crossing, dribbling, and all of that kind of thing. Looks like an interesting creative player. We do have a right back who's on this list. He doesn't actually excite me that much. There's a few low stats here. Pace is good. He can pull out a cross, but he doesn't excite me that much. This right back, on the other hand, so we've got two right backs. Oh boy, now this one is exciting. This guy's even faster than the other one. His crossing and dribbling may be not quite there and his mentals aren't really in a good state. But those physical attributes, the 14s, 15s, 16s, 17s, I think that will make this guy very, very useful. And I would probably look at this guy as my starting right back rather than this guy because I know this one has better mentals. He's a more experienced player and stuff like that. But this guy just looks more exciting and I think could do an interesting job up and down the flank. Also that jumping 14 will really help me on a defensive front because I don't think Valencia are going to be a, let's say, a dominant team. Given that most of the best players are defenders, we've got a good wing back. In fact, what I also don't see is forwards up here. 
this is a bit of a problem. The first attacking, really attacking player, I know Jose Gaia is a pretty attacking player, but the attacking position player is Hugo Duro, apparently. And he comes in kind of right at the middle of the pack, three star with a potential of four star. Okay, again, whether you trust the star rating or not is a question for a different time, but I'm going to say Carlos Machena, my assistant manager should know this team fairly well. As I come in to manage this team, I am going to trust my assistant manager at least until I get to know the players by myself. For a first look, I think I'm okay with going with the star ratings. This guy looks good. His mentals are quite nice. Finishing 14 is an outstanding pace, 14, acceleration 14. Not outstanding, but he can do a job. Also, his mental spread is pretty good. There aren't any super low mentals out there, which is the sign of a top level player where all of the mentals are decent to high. That is the sign of a player who can play at a high level. If you have a lot of low mentals, then you have problems. Pepe Lou, again, look at those mentals. Pretty decent mentals, so that tells me this guy should be one of my starters as well, even though his physicals aren't outstanding. They're okay, but his mentals are decent. So he can do a job for me in midfield, I would say. Jaume Domenech, I don't know if he's related to Raymond Domenech, the old French coach. I doubt it because it says his nationality is Spanish, but you never know. Not very exciting. His agility is decent, but yeah, I think the other goalkeeper was a lot better. But yes, this concerns me. The fact that there aren't that many uh, attacking players listed up there does concern me. Let's have a look at our positional spread among the squad. So we've clicked best position and we've sorted it there. So we've got our three goalkeepers to look at. That's fine as a squad. That is absolutely okay. One of the things I'm looking at with this positional spread here, I want to see whether my squad is filled out, whether I've got any big holes anywhere. I want to kind of have a rough count of my players as well, because it'll tell me, you know, can I actually play a certain tactic? Do I have the squad depth to play a tactic? So I can see immediately I've got two specialist right backs. I've got three left backs, including two young players. I can also see that I've got one, two, three, four, five center backs, although I think this guy's out on loan. Yeah, he's at nonce. So I've actually got four center backs. I've got two right backs, three left backs, and four center backs. That's my defensive squad. So that immediately tells me I kind of need to play four at the back. I can't play three at the back when I've only got four center backs. That doesn't actually work. Although this guy, Hugo, I think he can actually play center back. Let's have a look. Yeah, he can actually play center back. He could give me some options. He's not that good in the air. This might be a very good candidate for Libero, to be honest, which is interesting but he's probably best off in this defensive midfield position. Still, it's good to know that I have a couple of versatile players who could pop into center back. So can I actually play a libero formation? I think so, because I have a couple of ball playing center backs who could do that job. Short answer probably is I would play a libero if I'm looking at a long-term save. Going forward though, this is where I was really concerned. We don't have much at the forward area. If we look at these four strikers that we have at the club, Two of them on loan, obviously, which is, again, concerning. One of them is a two and a half star. One is just a two star. Our key guy over here, the guy at the club, is three star. He is fit. The other guy is injured, Alberto Mari, who looks okay, to be honest. Unfortunately, he is injured. Let's take a look at his injury and see. It's a torn hamstring. Five to six months. Okay, that guy's not going to be in my thinking at all. It's going to be a big bonus when he gets back, but I'm really not expecting him back at all. Okay, let's look at Roman Yaramchuk. This one is more aerial, but he's not very aggressive. He's not very brave. Work rate is kind of low as well, so he's not ideal for a target man. Normally with the 15 jumping, I would have said target man, but he doesn't really have the other attributes there either. He's not super creative, but he can do a job. Yeah, okay. Vision 14, passing 13. That is something I could utilize with him. First touch 14. Finishing 30, not ideal. So basic deep lying forward probably. And Rodrigo Farofa, finishing 14, pace 13. That's it. Wow. Yeah, so this guy's very much an emergency backup. And Hugo Duro is very much our starting striker. So yes, in terms of striker options, very, very poor. Let's just click best position again to sort that up properly once more. Diego Lopez, I think, can play striker. Yep, he could be a striking option. He, yeah, all right. He's got finishing 14, acceleration 14, stuff like that. So he could do a job as a striker. But again, nothing exciting there. He is one of our flank options. So we've got one left winger. That's Diego Lopez, who's more of an inside forward. Immediately we saw he's not a crossing kind of guy. 
We've got an AMC, one AMC who is on loan, or rather who's listed for loan. He looks good from a technical standpoint, but that physical, no, 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 no. That won't work for me. That kind of low physicals, I think, at the first division level really doesn't work. He could be a good player for the second division, but I don't think he can cut it in La Liga. Although he does have decent aggression, still, he's not getting up the pitch. He does look like my best creative kind of player, but those physicals are just not... Not, they're just not. Okay, right wing, I do actually have some depth at right wing, which is something to think about. We've got Sergi Kenos, who looks all right. He looks okay. Can he play any other positions, though? <laughs> well, he can play everywhere, but not as a center midfielder, really. That is a bit disappointing, because I was actually thinking, going for a center midfielder heavy tactic. So that's something to think about. Castillejo is on loan. We don't need to think about him. And Fran Perez is another option. Again, not exciting, very much an attacking winger. As you can see, he can't pass the ball. And that's a sign of a player who just, you know, aims forward and runs. So this is just a basic dribbly boy. I'm not a fan. I'm absolutely not a fan. Okay, it looks like we do have a couple of, you know, relatively decent options at right wing. Nothing crazy. We do have one striker and one decent backup in Yaremchuk on loan. Oh my word. But the rest of the talent looks like it is in midfield. Let's have a look at this guy who's on loan. Yeah, he looks okay. But this is amazing. Look at his height, 186 centimeters. So that's over six foot. That is almost six foot one. And his jumping reach is five. His strength is seven. His heading is five. So this guy's awful in the air despite actually being a tall guy. So this is another bit of reinforcement. Again, going back to that attributes video, that height does not matter in Football Manager. It is all about your jumping reach. So given his height, you'd think, yeah, this guy could do a job as a target man or a center back or something like that. Obviously, if he was playing in those positions, but he can't. He is 186, but he has jumping reach of five. No way. Okay, so now I have a good idea about the squad and where the squad is at. I know I don't have a left winger. I have a couple of half-decent right wing options. I know I can only play the one striker up top, especially with Albert Amari injured. So now again, this is where you would change your approach, I think, in two different ways. Based on the game mode that you're playing, if you're playing with the transfer window active, I would go straight out there and buy some reinforcements or loan in some reinforcements up front. I would actually want to get probably a left winger, a left inside forward to give myself a little bit of depth because that would then give me maybe the option of playing three at the front, like a right wing, left wing forward. I wouldn't mind going up there and getting a versatile striker. Somebody who could, let's say, play left wing and striker. That would give me a little bit of depth as well. But if you're not playing with that transfer window on, you need to make do with what you can. And that's the point of this video. So let's go. Let's go into tactics. I'm just going to go to create your own style. I don't want all of this stuff. I don't even care about the shape. Obviously, we don't want this kind of shape. Now, we want to put our best players in positions first. I think that's the easiest way to kind of visualize it. We had Mamadashvili, who was our goalkeeper. And I think sweeper keeper might be good for him. Because if we look at him again, he has decent eccentricity. Eccentricity kind of does funky things. Vision 12, though. And passing 13. So he can pass the ball. He can actually get through balls in there. I want this guy to play a little bit on the front foot. Maybe not as an attacking sweeper. That is something to think about. Just playing him as an attacking sweeper keeper. Let's put it on there for lols. But Jose Gaia was our key player. As we said, we want him getting forward. So let's get him wing back attack just to start with. We also said that Hugo Duro was our key striker. Obviously, from this tactic screen, we can see a little bit more about versatility. And it tells me here that he can play AMLC. So he could play in the attacking midfield role. But again, we don't really have another striker. So immediately, I'm just going to pull these two off. Hugo Duro will put him alone up front in that number nine position. And let's work from there. A couple of the other players we were thinking about was Diakabi. We know we were wanting to start him. We had that guy with the double name as our right back. Again, I want him getting up the flank. We saw that he had good physicals, stuff like natural fitness, stamina. All of that is really high. So let's get this guy going up and down. I don't want to have two attacking wing backs. So one of them attack, one of them support is probably the way to go. Both of them on attack seems like a little bit too much. 
Okay, Javi Guerra was another one that we wanted to get on the field. He was going to be in the central midfield. I'm actually going to put him right away to central midfielder attack. Again, I mentioned stats like finishing. He can actually play final balls as well, so I want to get him up the field as far as I can. Let's just keep him there for the moment and see what we can do with him. Gabriel Paulista was the other aggressive center back that we were looking at, if I remember right. Yep, all that aggression and all of that. So let's put him on Gaia's side. That might be useful. One way to do it is probably to do it like this and have the playmaker there or the playmaking center back play him as a ball playing defender or something like this because then he'll play some through balls to Gaia. That could work. In fact, I don't mind that. Let's go with that. Can he cover for the gap though? Mm, okay, yeah, he can. His positioning is good. Aggression is good. He has pace, obviously. I think I'm okay with this. So we'll have that as the setup. Gabriel Paulista, definitely a central defender defend. No worries about that at all. Pepe Lou was somebody we wanted to get in the starting lineup, and I think we looked at him and we said, this is just a decent midfielder, so let's play him in a decent midfielder position. The player traits is also something you want to look at. Tries long-range passes is something very, very interesting. I want to be using this. Hugo Guillemot. Yes, this was our potential libero, but I want to draw your eye to the player traits again. We have long range passes once more, switch ball to wide areas and brings ball out of defense. So very much a libero possibly, but also kind of a deep line playmaker. So I don't actually have to play him as a playmaker. I don't want to play him as a playmaker because this team doesn't really have pace up front. So there's no point a playmaker just ripping passes up there because uh, that's just not going to work. What could work is playing the ball around in defense and then letting the wingbacks provide some width and hitting that way. So let's put Guillemot over there. Andre Almeida was one of the other players that I was looking at and wanting to play. Yes, this guy is very, very good. So let's play him in the midfield also. I think he can play central mid. Yep, Andre Almeida is a midfielder and AMC. In fact, I could play a number 10 as well with this guy Almeida in there. Pepelu looks like he can play number 10. Yeah, just about. He has the attributes for it as well to some extent. Just having a closer look at Almeida though, again, we're seeing some good 15 stuff like dribbling, passing, vision's good, decision making is good, shoots from distance, tries long passes. I'm actually thinking this guy could be something like a Mezala. And if we want to have a Mezala, an attacking Mezala, we probably want him on the right hand side because we've got the attacking threat of Gaia on the left. So if we have Gaia going up here, then we have Almeida over there. And then we have Duro kind of in the middle, probably hanging a little bit left because the Mazala pushes up the right-hand side channel. Something like this could be quite interesting, but it is a work in progress still. All right, so I've basically gone in there now and I have one more spot to play with and I kind of need to figure out what to do with it. We have a couple of decent guys on loan. This one is quite useful as we looked at earlier. He's good from a technical point of view. Rodrigo Farofa is <laughs> not brilliant, but he could probably do a job as an attacking midfielder for me. Sergi Kenos is the one that you kind of want to put in the team. He's the, you know, the player who could make a difference in this right wing position. But obviously then the um, Mezala here doesn't work. So that's something to think about. The other option is to get another central defender on the field. This guy could be very, very good. His jumping's good, his aggression, bravery, all of that kind of thing is up there. So he could be a very useful player in center back if I want to play something like a back three. I would not then have too much depth, which is a bit of an issue. Guillamon then becomes my depth at center back or at sweeper. Maybe consider that, maybe not. All right, we've got to take a decision, so let's take that decision. We do have this guy here, Christian Mosquera, who can cover right back, but he looks like a center back if we just look at him once more. His jumping is a little bit low, but he's also pretty high potential. We also have this guy, Gasiorovsky. Dear Lord, how do you say his name? Either way... Again, he covers left back, but his main position looks like a center back. I don't know if this guy ever actually gets on the pitch looking at his stats, but he does offer a little bit of cover. So I'm going to bite the bullet and I'm actually going to bring another center back in there. Let's play back three. Uh, if we can figure out how to get the guy into the back three, go on. There we go. And now we can probably get these wing backs up a little bit because of the back three. And we can let the wing backs fly up the field. So this looks like a fairly decent tactic. The idea now with so many players here is to probably play the ball around in these areas and then finally get it up the pitch somehow. 
This is again just a shape. The duties are a little bit off. I think Gaia is the settled one. Javigera looks okay. Can we get wingback attack on this guy? It might actually be possible. We could also just go with a complete wingback support, which might be uh, doable. But I think I don't want to go that offensive to start with. Let's go with the wingback support to start with. And let's have Almeida as a Mazala getting into that kind of area. That looks okay. Let's switch this guy to a, a Carrilero probably to cover for the area that Gaia goes into. Because he's going to get all the way up here. We'll need a bit of defensive support in this area. I think wide center back defend is also a good idea here as well as here. Those guys should be able to do a job like that. And then we'll have to bring another center back in here. Ooh, look at this. So that was obviously a stable set of combinations activated by his presence. Um, let's see. Schenk is also more of a stopper kind of player. So let's get him out here to the left hand side. And let's get Diakabi into the middle. He looks like our ball player. Whoops, did we lose something? No, we didn't really. Double checking the footedness as well. This guy's a right foot. Chenk looks like he's a left foot. So that makes absolute sense. Diakabi is a right foot. He's more of the ball player. So let's make him a ball playing defender. Defend. And then we have two wide center backs on defense. So we've got the back three already. That looks good. In front of that, we then have kind of a two, I would say. And then the rest of the team goes forward. So obviously a lot of teams play something like a 3-2-5. And already we've kind of got that 3-2-5 as long as the DM goes a little bit up the field. So we could even possibly play this guy as a DM support. Because then he'll push up into this space a little bit more while the Carrilero will take this space. So I think that makes a little bit of sense. So then the DM can push up a little bit more. And because this guy's a wingback support... I don't think the DM support will hurt us too much. That might be a tweak that we'll have to make at some point later. We've then got the attacking run up this side. We've got an attacking run up this side. And then we've got an attacking run up here. Although Guerra gets into the box a little bit later. So that is a thing. It should also keep Guerra and Guillermon a little bit closer together though. And Duro. We can't play him really as an AF attack, I don't think. Because of the fact that this um, team is so deep. He will be a bit isolated if we play him so far up the field. That is a little bit of a danger. So I would probably want him as something like a deep playing forward. Maybe a deep playing forward, attack, support. One of the two will work. We could probably start him as a DLF support and then see how it works. Probably though, given that Gera is a CM attack, we'll play him as a deep playing forward attack. So that should give us a kind of a mid ground. The fact that he will drop a little bit deep, but he'll also make forward runs. I think that should be a good way to start and then see where we go. So obviously the challenge was to actually get a team on the field and figure out a shape where you have most of your best players at least trying to play in their best positions. I think we have that now. So we need to figure out mentality and all of that kind of thing. I want to keep possession as much as possible, but also have a little bit of forward thrust. The forward thrust is going to come from all of these runners. So we've got three runners from midfield as well as from wing back, we've also got a supporting run on this side. So that's where the penetration is going to come in. But we want to play the ball around in this area first before releasing it. I want to see that big diagonal release to Gaia early on. I want Almeida to offer options on that side as well. But generally speaking, I want possession to be retained in this area. So balanced, I think, is a really good mentality to start with for what we want here. If I go to something like attacking, these guys will just run up the field way too much. The DM support will be too aggressive. We'll have a lot of problems like that. So I think balanced is good. I might even go cautious just because of the DM support just to keep him relatively stable again i'm not playing a dmd because i do have three guys at the back there that's kind of my main rationale for playing a dm support and to get him a level with the carrilero if possible but again that might be something that i change with some tweaks this is just an initial setup in possession then what do we want to do in possession we want to keep the ball as much as possible so there is a you know a kind of an option of doing this that might be something that will help us keep possession with so many players in this area we've got so many players in this deep area our build-up play should be okay so we should be able to distribute it to those players maybe even just the center backs to distribute it central we might then here be able to play out of defense just by the virtue of having so many players around this area 
Kind of like Chubby Alonso, what he does by having seven players deep. As you can see, we also have seven, no, eight players in this deep area. Although in build-up, Guerra and Almeida will be kind of gone. So it could be six players in the build-up. That's still a decent amount of players. That's why I'm quite comfortable playing out of defense and distributing to center backs. I think that makes a lot of sense. Given that this is such a deep formation as well, I probably want to have counter-attack ticked on. As you can see, I've got three, four players who will stay back and be quite responsible. That is good enough for me. I don't really want to counter press, I don't think, because I won't have that many players in possession to do it. At the same time, I'm not going to turn it off by clicking regroup. I want to give the players, you know, a few seconds to maybe make that decision and counter press by themselves. Do I want to distribute quickly or slow pace down? Not really. I think my goalkeeper is actually smart enough to take some good decisions that way. Same thing with distribution type. Let's just let him distribute however he wants to. I'm okay with that. Okay, so out of possession, I think I'm going to keep it really simple. Mid block is something I definitely want to do because I've got so many players in this midfield area. I've got the wing back strata as well. So once they get into my block, I want to jump on them, which is why more often this is not a Gagan press. Gagan press would be kind of like there. This is more of a deep press. So once they get into our half, we're then going to start slamming onto them with our midfield, our wing backs, our defensive midfielder. All of these guys will then start pressing like Tigers and win the ball. Tackling, I don't really want to do anything crazy with tackling. These ones, the defensive line and pressing trap though, that is something that I want to do later on. I can, for example, see myself doing both a step up or a drop off and then adjusting my defensive line as it is. For example, keeping the standard and then going stepping up by just trying to compress the pitch a little bit more. I could also see myself playing a higher line and then going drop off, for example, if this doesn't really work in an attacking sense. So this is something that I think you can fine tune later on. Right now, I'm going to start it pretty standard and see where we go. I'm really tempted to do a high line because my defenders are not slow. They are definitely not slow with a minimum of kind of 13 pace, 13 acceleration. That's really not slow. So I could play a high line. The thing is, I have so many players in this back area that I might actually want to get the ball in here, get it mired into a midfield battle, and then win that midfield battle with numbers since I have four players in there, at least. I feel like I want to actually encourage the ball to be in this midfield zone. The trap inside, trap outside is also really interesting. This feels like a trap inside kind of setup with so many players in the center. I've got three center backs, three center midfielders, one DM running around to block things off as well. It definitely feels like a trap inside setup. But again, that's something that I'm going to click on later. So this is my tactic. Just that. Job done. Balance mentality a couple of key instructions things like shorter passing lower tempo because i want to keep the ball in this kind of area get players getting into good positions and then fire it out why do i say fire it out without a playmaker it's because guys like guillemont do have long range passes and switches and stuff like that so i can get that switch going from here almeida as well has long range passes so that's something that i will see happening Pepe Lou has the ability to switch with long-range passes too. So I do actually have midfield staff who can actually do that job without me telling them, okay, individually direct passes or individual playmakers or something like that. They'll do it via their player trade, so I'm not going to worry about it too much. There's also a possibility that I switch one of these two guys to support. Maybe not the Mazala because I feel like I need an attacking threat on that side since the wingback is on support. But again, I might think about something like a Mazala support and then switching him to attack something to think about right now i'm happy with this how this is going to work again let's keep possession of the ball let's get players in threatening positions and then fire the ball out with switches kind of like overload and then switch especially with gaia earlier on and then with this guy as an option on the other side that feels like the way to go and playing the ball up the field with a low tempo short passing game feels like the way to go because i don't have any attacking talent i don't have any real threats in that attacking sense in transition, because I've got so many players in this kind of area, again, play out of defense looks good. Short distribution, get possession of the ball again, and move the ball up like that. Counterattack feels good to me, just as another kind of an arrow in my quiver. But I don't want to do counter press because I just won't have that many players in the right position. They'll be too far out of position. That counter press will become a little bit of a risk. At the same time, I do want to have occasional counter presses, especially with these midfield players. That feels good to me. And again, the mid block, because my team is so deep, I feel like I need to do a mid block and get people as soon as they get into this halfway line kind of area. I could do something like a lower block like this, or I could do a high line and a mid block. That feels quite good as well, but that's something I'll do as soon as I see it not working. So for me, that's how I do it. 
that's how I look at my squad, figure out who my players are, which the key players are, where can I score goals? That's a big thing that I was thinking about, even though I didn't really say it. Where the hell do I score goals from? Gaia, for example, with his ability to cross and get up the field is one way. Guerra with his ability to finish is one way. Almeida with his creative ability is one way. And then just pass the ball into the net as well. That feels like the way I can score some goals with this team. And then based on the shape that I figured out, based on the players who are on the pitch, uh, based on their attributes, things like defensive line pace and stuff like that, based on where the players are, who the players are, is how I've come up with my player instructions, team instructions, and things like that. I hope this has helped. I hope this has given you a little bit of insight into how I think about creating tactics, looking at my team, profiling my players, and that kind of thing. I know it's been a slightly slower paced video than normal. Not that my videos are fast paced to begin with, but I hope you have enjoyed it. Thanks a lot. Talk to you in the comments below. Cheers.